Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes Who is Fat Leonard, the fugitive Venezuela, turned over to the U.S.? Two major national security trials are putting the spotlight back on civil rights in Hong Kong. Here's what to know. Shanghai Disney's Zootopia debuts a midweek economic recovery. Asia stocks to drop as global rally loses steam, markets wrap. Most Hong Kongers think their workplaces are not up to scratch, survey finds. Who is Fat Leonard, the fugitive Venezuela, turned over to the U.S.? Washington Post. The Venezuelan government has handed over Leonard Glenn Francis, known as Fat Leonard, to U.S. authorities. Francis was the owner of Glenn Defense Marine Asia, a Singapore-based company that held $250 million in U.S. defense contracts to resupply and service U.S. Navy ships in ports throughout Asia. In exchange for bribes including prostitutes, Francis defrauded U.S. taxpayers of an estimated $50 million. Francis had fled the U.S. in 2020 before he was due to be sentenced, but was arrested in Venezuela and has now been handed over to the U.S. as part of a wider prisoner exchange. Two major national security trials are putting the spotlight back on civil rights in Hong Kong. Here's what to know. CNN Two high-profile trials in Hong Kong are set to test the impact of Beijing's national security law on the city's pro-democracy activists. The trials of media mogul Jimmy Lai and the so-called Hong Kong 47 will set a precedent for how political acts are treated in the territory in future. Lai is accused of colluding with foreign forces and is on trial for three counts of this under the national security law, as well as one charge under the Colonial Era Sedition Act. The Hong Kong 47, including Joshua Wong, were arrested in 2020 for holding an unofficial primary election to decide who should contest city lawmaker elections. They have been charged with conspiracy to commit subversion. Both trials are expected to conclude in 2023. The Chinese authorities say the national security law has restored stability to Hong Kong, but critics say it has suppressed freedoms. Hong Kong plans to expand the number of national security crimes with new legislation. Hong Kong and Chinese officials say the law protects rights and freedoms and is in line with other countries' national security laws. However, Western governments, including the UK and the US, say the law has slashed freedoms in Hong Kong. The US and the UK suspended their extradition agreements with Hong Kong following the imposition of the law. Shanghai Disney's Zootopia debuts a midweek economic recovery. Nikkei Asia Shanghai Disney Resort has opened Zootopia-themed attractions to cater to rising demand for local tourism products amid an unstable economic recovery in China. Fans of the Disney animation defied the near-zero winter weather to form queues at the main gate, hoping to be the first to board the Zootopia, Hot Pursuit All-Terrain Cruiser. Ordinary tickets priced at 435 Chinese yuan, $61, were sold out prior to Wednesday, leaving visitors having to pay for pricier premium options. Most Hong Kongers think their workplaces are not up to scratch, survey finds. South China Morning Post a study by Cisco has found that 72% of professionals in Hong Kong believe their office workplaces are not suitable for their needs. Although most are happy to have partially returned to in-person work, workspace design, layout, and technology have not kept pace with changing employee expectations. The study surveyed 7,550 full-time employees and 1,650 employers across seven Asia-Pacific markets. It found that office layouts and seating arrangements were a major reason employees felt their workplace was not conducive to collaboration and brainstorming. The study also highlighted concerns about technology infrastructure and integration. Graduate pilots help keep Hong Kong aviation sector recovery on course. SCMP Opinion Cathay Pacific Airways has hired the first group of pilots trained under its integrated program in Hong Kong. The 21 graduates will work as second officers, marking a step towards Cathay's goal of recruiting 800 cadet pilots by 2024. 
the pilots underwent seven weeks of simulator training and studied theory at Polytechnic University. Cathay's Legacy Cadet Program in Adelaide will continue to run alongside the integrated pathway. Cathay has been working to expand its pool of pilots by collaborating on flight training between Hong Kong and mainland China. National Security Watchdog slams diplomatic intelligence collection program for lack of safeguards and oversight. The Globe and Mail Canada's global affairs diplomats lack oversight and adequate training in security matters, according to a report by the National Security and Intelligence Review Agency, NSIRA. The report warned that the Global Security Reporting Program, GSRP, diplomats, known as the eyes and ears of the Canadian government, sometimes stray into covert collection of intelligence, contravening the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. The GSRP has come under scrutiny following a report in the Globe and Mail in November, which alleged that GSRP officer Michael Covert passed information to the Canadian Security Intelligence Service and Intelligence Services from the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. The partially redacted NSIRA report did not mention Covert by name, but warned about the overlap between GSRP officers and the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, and noted that GSRP officers did not appreciate the risks associated with overseas contacts and sources. The report also found that GSRP officers had engaged with local intelligence agencies and collected classified information from sources. Lost Canadians win court battle to reclaim citizenship rights. The Toronto Star a Canadian court has ruled that it is unconstitutional for Canada to deny automatic citizenship to children born abroad whose parents were also born overseas. The ruling comes as part of a court case brought by seven multi-generational Canadian families who challenged the second-generation cut-off rule, which denies the right to pass on Canadian citizenship by descent to children born abroad. The court has given the federal government six months to repeal the rule and amend the Citizenship Act. The court ruling means that the Liberal government must fix the issue through legislation. The ruling was hailed by the family's lawyers, who argued that the current law creates a second class of citizenship. The change in the law will allow first-generation foreign-born Canadians who obtain citizenship by descent the freedom to explore opportunities abroad without the citizenship restriction. However, the court did not grant the family's request for damages, as it did not find that the government had acted in bad faith or clearly disregarded their charter rights. Clever, cringe or concerning? Politicians are taking TikTok campaigning to a whole new level. ABC Presidential candidates in Indonesia are using social media to target young voters, who make up 60% of the electorate, in a bid to win the February election. Candidates are posting cat videos, using Hollywood references and even dancing on TikTok to appeal to millennials and Generation Z. The tactics have attracted criticism from some young people, who say they are offended and frustrated by the gimmicks. However, others are charmed by the new personas, which could influence the outcome of the election. Prabowo Subianto, the leading candidate, has been investing the most in rebranding himself for a younger demographic. Videos of him dancing have gone viral, and memes portraying him as a cute cartoon character have appeared on clothing. The election will see Prabowo, a defense minister and ex-Special Forces general, challenge former Central Java Governor Gonjar Pranowo and former Jakarta Governor Anis Baswedan to lead the predominantly Muslim country. Veteran Hormidas Ferdet was last Canadian survivor of Battle of Hong Kong. The Globe and Mail Hormidas Ferdet the last surviving Canadian soldier who fought in the Battle of Hong Kong and was held prisoner of war by the Japanese, has died aged 106. Fredette was a rifleman in the Royal Rifles of Canada and fought a losing battle against Japanese forces who vastly outnumbered them for 17 days before Hong Kong fell. The Royal Rifles were sent to bolster the British colony's defences before the Japanese attacked the day after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. 2,000 Canadian soldiers took part in the battle, and 290 were killed. Fredette then spent 44 months as a POW until his release at the end of World War II. 
the Hong Kong Veterans Association, formed by returning veterans in 1946, was dissolved earlier this year when Fredette signed a letter to the Minister of Veterans Affairs, in accordance with the association's constitution. Rogue Hong Kong cabbies must get point of new law. SCMP Opinion the Legislative Council in Hong Kong has approved a bill which sets out a demerit points system for taxi drivers. The system, which will be implemented next year, will penalize drivers for offenses such as overcharging, refusing to accept a hire, and not using the most direct route. Drivers will accumulate points for each offense, with disqualification from operating a taxi possible if a driver accumulates 15 points or more within two years. The system aims to improve the image of the taxi industry, which has been affected by the rise of ride-hailing services. This boy band has taken Hong Kong by storm and put Kanto Pop back on the map, but can it do the same for Tasmania? ABC Hong Kong boy band Sensation Mirror recently visited Tasmania to film a television series called Mirror Time, which will air in Hong Kong on Christmas Day. The band's management reached out to Tourism Tasmania about collaborating during their Australian trip, and the state was seen as a great destination to film part of their series. The visit is part of an effort to boost Hong Kong visitor numbers to Tasmania and tap into the trend of entertainment-inspired travel. Hong Kong is one of Tasmania's top three tourism markets. U.S. and U.K. tighten enforcement of Russian oil price cap. Financial Times the UK and US are introducing new rules to make it harder for Russia to circumvent the price cap imposed by the G7 nations, the EU and Australia. Under the new regulations, insurers and other service providers will be able to demand information about the costs of insurance and freight in transactions where the oil is sold at a price that includes these costs. The change is designed to make it more difficult to claw money back through inflated fees for shipping and other expenses. Russia has built its shadow fleet to avoid the cap, but remains reliant on Western-linked companies for a proportion of its exports. Hong Kong's problems trace back to China. And also America. Economist. Hong Kong's beleaguered financial industry is struggling, with the city's main stock market index down more than a quarter since January. The money raised from IPOs in the first 11 months of 2023 was the lowest in 20 years, and the financial services sector has accounted for more than a fifth of Hong Kong's GDP, meaning the city is finding it hard to prosper. Hong Kong's GDP is smaller now than it was in 2018, and the city's economy is expected to grow by just 3.3% in 2023, compared to initial forecasts of 6%. Hong Kong's property market has also suffered, with prices falling almost 20% since their peak. The introduction of China's strict national security law has further eroded Hong Kong's autonomy and made it harder for the city to fulfill its role as a superconnector between China and the rest of the world. Analysis, China spy agency now watches for doomsayers. Nikkei Asia China's Ministry of State Security is targeting negative opinions about the country's economy in a possible crackdown on economic security. The ministry's social media posts have coincided with the rise of online opinions, which dismiss the government's official view that the economy is recovering. Analysts who explain the true situation of China's economy using objective facts and figures could come under pressure and be subject to punitive action. The ministry is signaling that those who provide negative economic analyses could be detained if they say too much. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees world, bringing you the latest news and analysis from around the globe. Let's dive right into today's stories. First up, we have the capture of Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, by the Venezuelan government. This notorious figure defrauded the U.S. government of millions of dollars through bribes and fraudulent contracts. It's quite ironic that he thought he could find refuge in Venezuela, only to be handed over to U.S. authorities. I guess you could say his escape plan was shipwrecked. Moving on, we have two major trials in Hong Kong that are shining a light on civil rights under Beijing's national security law. 
These trials will set a precedent for the treatment of pro-democracy activists in the future. The Chinese authorities claim that the national security law has restored stability, but critics argue that it has suppressed freedoms. It seems Hong Kong's future hangs in the balance, like a tightrope walker trying to find their footing. In lighter news, Shanghai Disney has opened Zootopia-themed attractions to cater to the rising demand for local tourism products in China. It's amazing to see fans braving the winter weather to experience the magic of Disney. I guess you could say they're willing to go to great lengths to have a wild time. Now, let's talk stocks. Asian shares are set to drop after a global rally lost steam. It seems the stock market roller coaster is taking a dip after a nine day winning streak. But hey, don't worry, folks. Just remember, what goes down must come up, right? Switching gears, a study has found that most professionals in Hong Kong believe their office workplaces are not up to scratch. It seems like the office design and technology haven't kept pace with changing employee expectations. Maybe it's time for some office makeover to boost productivity and collaboration. In aviation news, Cathay Pacific Airways has hired its first group of pilots trained under its integrated program in Hong Kong. This move is a step towards Cathay's goal of recruiting 800 cadet pilots by 2024. Looks like they're taking off towards a brighter future in the aviation sector. Now, let's cross over to Canada where a report has revealed that the country's global affairs diplomats lack oversight and adequate training in security matters. It's like they've been caught in a game of international spy without proper training. Maybe they should take a page out of James Bond's book and get some secret agent training. In a landmark ruling, a Canadian court has declared that it is unconstitutional to deny automatic citizenship to children born abroad. This ruling will allow first-generation foreign-born Canadians to explore opportunities abroad without citizenship restrictions. It seems like the court has given the government a citizenship wake-up call. In the world of politics, presidential candidates in Indonesia are using social media, specifically TikTok, to target young voters. It's a whole new level of campaigning. Some people find it cringe, while others are charmed. I guess we'll have to wait and see if these TikTok tactics lead to any political likes in the election. In a somber note, Hormidas Fredette, the last surviving Canadian soldier who fought in the Battle of Hong Kong and was held as a prisoner of war by the Japanese, has passed away at the age of 106. His bravery and sacrifice will never be forgotten. Let's take a moment to honor his memory. In Hong Kong, the Legislative Council has approved a bill to implement a demerit points system for taxi drivers. It seems even the roughest drivers will have to steer clear of any bad behavior or risk losing their taxi licenses. Let's hope this new system puts an end to any taxi trouble on the streets. Lastly, we have the Hong Kong boy band sensation Mirror making waves in Tasmania. Their visit is part of an effort to boost tourism and tap into the trend of entertainment-inspired travel. Who knows, maybe Tasmania will become the hottest vacation spot for Hong Kong pop fans. It's like they're putting Tasmania on the map, one dance move at a time. That wraps up today's news and analysis. Now, I want to hear from you, my observant audience. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions or insights to share? Let's engage in some lively discussion. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of six do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the six do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. 
To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 do brief via email.